Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for another Thought from the Bible. As we continue with these videos this year, we're digging into some of the, the minor characters that you find in this book. The kind of characters that may only be there for a sentence or two, and yet have so much to teach us about trusting in God, about looking up and reaching out into our world. So today we, we're gonna go into the New Testament and we find ourselves on one Sabbath day in a place called Capernaum where Jesus is teaching in a synagogue. And the people there are absolutely astounded by this man's power. He's just cast out a demon and they are listening to his teaching and saying, wow, who is this man who has so much authority as he teaches. And I can imagine Jesus' disciples being a little bit on a high after this experience. The account of this story that we're looking at in the books of Luke and Mark suggests that this happened fairly early on in Jesus' ministry. Suddenly they are seeing the awesome power of God at work doing miraculous things. And so Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, they, they invite Jesus and everybody else back to their home. But when they arrive, they find Peter's mother-in-law there, very, very sick. The Bible describes it as saying that, that she had a high fever, a, a fire burning in her. And it seems that the people there, the people in the house were genuinely worried about her condition. Because the first thing that happens as Jesus enters through that door is that they tell him about her and they ask Jesus to help her, to save her. This account is told in all three of the synoptic gospels in the Bible. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And yet we never know this woman's name. She is completely anonymous. All we know is her relation to Peter. She is the mother of his wife. It's possible that she might have been a widow. We, we don't know for sure, but it seems like she was living with the, the children. So there is that possibility that, that she was a, a widow and being cared for by her kids, but, but that is just speculation. But despite her anonymity, despite her only appearing in this very, very, very brief story in the Bible, albeit told three times, there's a lot that we can learn here. Now we don't really know what Peter's mother-in-law thought about Jesus before this story. She may have been a, a huge supporter right from the outset, we don't know, but, but I, can, I can imagine that she might have felt a little bit unsure. This man had come along and called her daughter's husband the provider of the family he had called him away from his work, away from his responsibilities, into to traveling for long periods at a time, leaving his wife, her daughter, at home. Suddenly, Peter wasn't fishing anymore. He wasn't making a living that way. He was traveling around with a guy who had, had suddenly appeared and who they didn't really know all that much about at this point. Now, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing here, but, but I can imagine, I can imagine a few doubts. I can imagine a little bit of uncertainty. What's going to happen to my daughter? I can't imagine that fishermen at the time were particularly rich. I don't think it would have been a really, uh, that Peter and his family would have been really affluent. I don't think they'd have had a lot of savings stored up in the bank that they could use to support the family while Peter went on what became a, a not very short-term mission trip. She may have had her concerns. She may have wondered who this Jesus was, that everyone was so willing to drop everything to follow. But now we find her sick and she's lying in her bed in misery, perhaps wondering if if this is the end, 
There are no modern medicines here, no antibiotics, infection or disease. Those, those things could kill so much more easily. But that's where we entered Jesus into the scene. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. I find that the most beautiful picture. Jesus takes her hand. Now that's a comforting motion at any time, right when you're feeling a little bit sick, when you're feeling a little bit sad, for somebody to take your hand. That feels nice. But Jesus brings her so much more than comfort. He brings restoration. If, if Peter's mother-in-law had been uncertain before, I'm pretty sure that she wasn't now. See, whenever we're sick, whenever we're hurting, whenever we feel weak and defeated and frustrated, Jesus is reaching out to take our hands. And even in those moments where we may feel a little bit of doubt and a little bit of uncertainty, and maybe when we're questioning what God is doing in our lives through these situations that we find ourselves in that don't seem to make any sense, even in those moments, Jesus is reaching out his hand. Isn't that beautiful? No matter how uncertain or doubt-filled we may be, Jesus is still there saying, you can come back to me right now. I have everything that you need. This woman, so seriously ill, just moments before, leaps to her feet. The rest of that verse in Mark chapter one says that the fever left her and she began to wait on them. Now I wonder if you've ever had a fever, a high fever in particular. Even when it goes away and you start feeling a little bit more yourself, the last thing that you want to do is get straight back to work, have a, a house full of people waiting on them, preparing them a meal, looking after them. Normally I think you'd, you'd be asking if, if they could perhaps leave you alone in peace to recuperate a little bit after your illness. We have no idea how long she was ill for. That fever could have lasted for quite some time Time. She could have been wasted away. And yet Jesus goes above and beyond what she may have expected in that moment of healing. Not only does her fever vanish, but her energy is restored. And all she wants to do is say thank you in what way she can by serving this man and his disciples. And there's an important thing to remember here, and that's that this day in this story was the Sabbath. Preparing a meal, as, as some translations describe what she did after being healed, it was not allowed. And yet that's what she does. She looks at Jesus, this man who's, who's you know, fully man as well as fully God, probably a little bit tired after his work in the synagogue. And she sees what she can do to help. She can use her God-given gifts of cooking and hospitality to help him. She can serve. But it may have felt a little bit uncomfortable for her doing that on the Sabbath. Sometimes serving can feel a little bit uncomfortable for us. It can take us out of the normal routine. It can mess up our schedules. It can make us change the plans that we had for the day or the week or the month or the year. But when we hear Jesus calling and we see an opportunity to serve and to use our gifts to glorify his name and to help his people and to spread his love, then we need to take those opportunities. We need to serve. That is what we are called to do. This is not about us. It's about God. 
And you know, this isn't some story about how women must be subservient to men. It's not about how a woman's place is in the kitchen preparing meals. It's not about that at all. In fact, the same word that is used to describe Peter's mother-in-law serving here is actually used by, by Jesus later in the book of Mark, talking about himself. He says, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be the first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This anonymous woman caught hold of something special in this moment. She recognized that we are not here to be served. And that would have been an easy decision for her, right? That would have been the easier route. She could have said, look guys, I have been sick. I've been really, really ill here. I think somebody needs to bring me some food. Thank you very much. That might have been our reaction. That might have been our response. But she realized that she could be the servant here, that she could offer this, this little bit of her life, both for God on earth, personified in Christ Jesus, but also for those people who were with him. We are called to serve. In this upside down kingdom of Jesus, we're not supposed to want to be on the top, but on the bottom the servant, the one looking out for others, the one washing the feet, the one using our God-given gifts and abilities to glorify his name and to be a, a living example of offering our lives to serve one another humbly in love. That's not the natural response for us as humans. It's not the natural response in a world where we're told constantly that it's all about us. It's about living our best lives. It's about making sure that we're okay. God's kingdom is flipped on its head. It's about serving first. It's about thinking of others first. It's about thinking of God first and how we can serve him and glorify his wonderful name. What a great story this is. It's so short, but there is so much in it. I love that thought. Jesus reaches out his hand to us, regardless of what we're facing, regardless of what pain we're in, what sickness, what hurt, what disbelief and doubt, Jesus still reaches out his hand to us and he brings with it everything that we need over and above what we need. Whatever that may be for you today, be it joy or energy or peace or healing, Jesus has everything that we need. But he does that not only for our own benefit, but so that we can be his ambassadors here on earth, so that we can be re-energized to serve. Thank you so much for joining me today for that thought from the Bible. Do you have any thoughts on this story? Anything else we can get out of this little snippet about Peter's mother-in-law? Please do feel free to leave a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts as well. And I'll be back on Wednesday next week with another video, with another thought from the Bible, another minor character to explore and see what we can get out of their lives. So I will see you then.